Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to do something fun. We're going to be installing a reversing camera on our little Corsa. Why we're doing this? Well, because about two months ago, I went and bought a box standard uh, Android navigation unit for the car to replace the existing radio unit. And when I did that, I did it for three reasons. Number one, the card obviously didn't have navigation in its default setting, and now it does, which makes it much easier to figure out where you need to get to. And since it's an Android, you can pretty much use your favorite apps for navigating. Um, and it connects to, to your phone via Wi-Fi, so we can have a, a constant stream of data available. Uh, number two, which is obviously more important, um, is Bluetooth. Now, this car, even though it has this button here, on this version, this button doesn't actually link to uh, a telephone. So this car doesn't, didn't have Bluetooth by default. And uh, around here, I see lots of people driving with their uh, while holding onto their phones, which is not only illegal, but it's also extremely dangerous. So I wanted this car to have Bluetooth, so there's no need to actually hold on to the phone while you're driving. Number three is precisely the reversing camera. Um, you might say, okay, yeah, the course is a little small. Why does it need it? Well, honestly, I've had several situations in the past. My first two cars were pretty much the size of the Corsa. And um, what I figured was, even though you have reversing sensors, they don't necessarily always pick um, and identify objects that are very close. Like, I don't know, maybe small animals that are smaller than the bumper, so the sensors might not detect them. Whereas with a properly good reversing camera, you should be able to tell if there's anything uh, close to the car. So today, after about, let's say, a month and a half of waiting, I actually received the camera. Now, everything that you see here, the camera, the Android unit, I got them from AliExpress. I, I actually started to like that platform quite a lot because, uh, well, I actually found pretty much all of these things available in Romania as well. But that's something like double or triple the, the price. So it made no sense to buy them from here when I could buy the exact same product from there. So there's that. Um... And yeah, I just needed to wait a bit and uh, the camera arrived, but this is actually specifically made for the Corsa. It should integrate well, at least in theory. We're going to verify this a bit later with the unit. And I also got some other cool accessories that I'll show you a bit later. And without further ado, let's talk a bit about what we're going to do. As always, first we start by thinking about what we need to do. Um, and then we actually start doing because uh, we don't want to cause any issues or break anything and whatnot. So the first thing that we're going to do is test the camera. We're not going to put wires through the car just yet. We're not going to solder anything initially. Initially, we're just going to make some initial connections, do a couple of measurements and make sure that the camera pairs properly with our unit. And how we're going to do that? Well, <clears throat> the way uh, reversing camera works, if you look at the back, it has two connectors. This one is the one for power. Okay, it needs 12 volts. And what usually happens is the 12 volts are taken from the reversing light. So we have to splice the ground and power wire for the reversing light and then have a wire that's going to connect to this. The second wire, the yellow one, is for the signal. This needs to be routed all the way through the unit. Um, so before we route anything and we, let's say, tear the car apart, we're going to do some very simple connections to the reversing light, make sure the camera has power, power it up, link it to the unit and make sure that it works. And in order to do that, we need to access the electrical connectors for the backlights. You can pretty much pick whichever side you want, be it um, left or right. The way you access this is 
you take apart this plastic cap and depending on the side you may have to remove some additional elements so on the left side there's your first aid kit and then it's pretty much free on the right side you have to remove the toolbox which is fairly straightforward you pull on it with a little bit of effort and it eventually uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you film live and eventually yeah it should come out let's see just just like that okay now i chose to work on the right side because as you can see after i remove the toolbox i have a whole other room and the wiring harness that connects to the um, reversing lights is fairly accessible okay next up is disconnecting the wiring harness from the reversing lights which is this connector that you should simply pull and it looks like this these are the wires that get in this is the connector itself now for this purpose of testing we're also going to be removing the backlight itself to identify which of the circuits is ground and which of the circuits is the one for the reversing light to do that you need to remove these two white uh, nuts they they are removed by hand they're not very very tight okay i'll get that later and after that is done you need to just simply remove the reversing light block just like that and it comes out fairly easily and lastly in order to remove the plastic cover on the reversing light you see there are three plastic connections that you can just open with your finger this is one this is the second one and down here is the third one you uh, pull all three apart and gently remove the um, block that contains the bulbs from the plastic cover and here it is out it came from the plastic cover fairly straightforward this is by the way the exact exact uh, procedure that you would need to follow if you want to replace a bulb see now it's extremely simple for us to replace bulbs and now we need to start looking at the metal circuits okay so let's see what we have first of all we need to identify the circuit that it's common to all bulbs and that is going to be our ground so if we take a look here let's see, you see this square bit that goes down here is the same square bit as this and the same as this and it gets all the way through here and through here this is our ground uh, so let's see where it gets connected you can see here on the back that the ground gets connected to this uh, pin which is the third from the right and secondly we need to figure out the power for the reversing bulb, uh, reversing bulb which is this one and this is again fairly straightforward we need to identify the second circuit going to the bulb which is this one and which links with the first pin so the third pin is ground the first pin is the power to the reversing lights having said that now we just need to fetch a bit two bits of wires that we're simply going to attach uh, loosely to the bulbs we're gonna connect them to the camera connect quickly connect the camera to the unit and see if the camera works and here's our little test setup again please ignore the wires these are not final so we use the uh, red wire for the plus and the blue wire for the ground and these are connected to the plus and the minus of the power supply for the camera okay and this goes into the power supply wire that's connected directly to the camera as you can see here here's the camera and then the second wire 
this yellow one has a long extension that goes all the way to our unit at the front. And with our unit, all that needs to be done is you need to identify the wire that's typically labeled rear camera input or something similar and just connect the signal wire to it. In the case of the Corsa, what I noticed is you see these also come with uh, unconnected small red wires. This typically supply the signal to the camera telling it um, either to the camera or to the unit telling it that the car is in reverse. But in the case of this car in this unit, uh, this is already done. So every time we would put the car into reverse, the screen would go blank waiting for a signal from a camera. And now that it is connected, we don't actually need to do anything with this wire. So let's see what happens. Okay. And if the car is put into reverse, there we go. Yeah. So the camera works, which is very, very nice because it means now we know that the components are all functional and working well together and we need to start um, fixing them in their final position. And before we start installing, there's one, I would say, very important measurement that we need to do. And that is we want to measure the amount of power that the camera draws when on. And as you can see, we have this very, very crude setup in which all we did was we added an ammeter to our positive line. Okay, you can see it goes to the unit and the black wire from the unit goes to the power wire from the supply of the camera that is over there. And now with the camera turned on, we can measure the amps that are being drawn. And we can see that this unit is drawing, that's about 40 milliamps, so 0 0.04. And if you multiply that by 12, that gives you, I don't know, about uh, 0 0.5 watts, roughly, power consumption. Now with 0 0.5 watts power consumption and only 40 milliamps, we know that the thickness of this wire is sufficient because that was very important. We always need to make sure that the thickness of the wire is sufficient for the amount of current that the unit is going to draw. In our case, for 40 milliamps, the thickness of this, these wires that came uh, the, with the power supply are sufficient. And we also verify that the additional load that we've added isn't affecting the reversing lights in any way. Because you can see both of them are still turned on. And now we can actually begin work on splicing our two wires that uh, normally power up the rear lights. And you can start by doing two things. Number one is you want to make yourself a bit of room so that you have access to this connector. And for that you have two items to unclip. There's this bunch of wires at the bottom with this transparent plastic which you can simply pull out. It's connected to another bundle that is down there at the bottom. And the second thing is this bit which goes in here on the side of the car. You could normally cut this but then you would need to have a replacement in my case i didn't have a replacement so what i did i what i did i just stuck my hand through here at the back and managed after a few attempts to push on these two pins sufficiently to allow me to pull the cable bunch out and now i have a reasonable amount of working space And before you do any kind of work on the electric system of the car, um, I would recommend you disconnect the battery to make sure there's no risk of a short circuit. Moving on, I'm at the point where I want to start splicing my power supply for the camera to the two wires namely the power wire for the reversing lights and the ground wire. 
Now you can do this in multiple ways. For example, you could use some, uh, some of those crimp connectors. Though personally, I don't really like them. I don't know if they'll hold well to vibrations and the lifetime of the car. So I wanted to do something better. And that better meant that I, I want to do the splicing using um, soldering, using uh, like a better mechanical connection between the new wires and the existing ones. And for that, I needed to physically remove the two uh, wires from the rear light jack that you see here. And the way you go about doing this, if you want, is you see how the connectors look for each of the wires, they're identical. And you see how they have these two uh, stoppers uh, that are at an angle at the top and bottom. And obviously what you need to do to remove them from the plastic connector is you need to simultaneously push on them so that they come flat with the body of the connector. What I used for that, I used, uh, let's say two nails one of them which I actually had to grind down a bit. Two nails which need to ideally are not necessarily circular but are somewhat rectangular in profile. I don't know if you can see this one if the phone decides to focus, hopefully. See this one is not very tall but is a bit wide. It needs to be wide enough to get, see underneath your connector and that black rectangular hole over there and if you push it there that's gonna press on the lower stopper and this is this might take a bit more effort whereas the top stopper is easier to um, is easier to press because you actually have access from it from the top of the connector anyways after a bit of trying I managed to remove the two wires that I'm interested in. So now we can proceed with the with connecting our camera power supply to these two. Now on most many Opals as well as other cars um, which use a CAN bus system it may be that the power that is being supplied to the rear lights is not a flat 12 volts but a pulse width modulated signal. Um, and this kind of signal uh, may not power a reversing camera properly. If that happens, uh, what you need to do is you need to use something like this, which is a filter, which connects to the power supply of the rear lights at its input and will actually provide the flat 12 volts at the output. Um, I will be installing this, but that got me thinking. If I were, for example, to install it as is, and let's say, for example, a week, a month, a year from now it breaks and I have to replace it, I'm going to have to cut wires, make new connectors, solder again, and that would be a bit of a headache. So what I actually want to do is I'm gonna take a bit of this wire because it's thick enough and well, to be honest, I don't really have any additional wire available of decent quality. And I'm gonna take some of this, one end of those of the wire that I cut, I will connect properly to the power supply of the rear lights. Whereas at the other end, I'm gonna use some crimp connectors, let's say like this, so that, for example, if I, let's say, want to remove a filter or the camera or something else in the future, I don't need to cut wires, I just need to disconnect them mechanically and that will be uh, far easier. And I took some time off camera to um, finish up the uh, connectors on all the wires that we'll be installing. So let's take them uh, one by one. These are the two short bits that we will be attaching to the rear light uh, wires, as I showed earlier. You can see I added, I added these uh, crimp connectors here and then some heat shrink. Uh, these are both mechanically crimped as well as um, soldered. So I tested them out, they're solid. 
uh, on the power supply filter again the mechanical connectors these go together with these and similarly uh, mechanically crimped soldered and with the uh, heat shrink on top and lastly the signal wire you remember we had those um, we had that red signal wire that we didn't really need for this application and in order not to let that one uh, in the open I uh, added I put it in here and applied the uh, insulating tape to make sure that there's no risk of that red wire touching uh, touching anything throughout the life of the car in terms of insulation my preferred method is to apply a good amount of insulating tape and then at the very end use this use a small zip tie which covers the start and end of the insulating tape as you can see and in doing so basically there's zero risk of uh, of the insulating tape coming apart uh, in time And we're at the point where we want to splice our wires to the power and ground lines from the rear lights. And my favorite technique of doing this, I take something like a pick. I remove about a centimeter, a centimeter and a half of insulation from uh, the first wire. And with the pick, I make a separation between the strands, making sure not to rip any of the strands apart just like this okay and with our second wire we remove about three centimeters of insulation we twist it up we insert it through the earlier separation that we made just like this we and then we simply tighten it around the first wire, just like this. I've actually seen this on YouTube and uh, it really is a good connection method for wires because it has two advantages. Number one, the electrical connection is very good. And number two, the mechanical connection is also very good because you can pull on this and it won't come out. All right. And with this done, all I have to do right now is solder it for extra protection and then heat shrink it. And we'll do it for this one, we'll do it for the ground wire as well. And I'll show you the results a bit later. And here's how it looks after the addition of the two wire extensions. So these are both mechanically connected as well as soldered and then with heat shrink applied. So these connections will definitely not break throughout the life of the car we've also verified that the electrical connection between the points is okay i.e there is zero impedance to the extension wires and now all that's left to do is to put the contacts back in the plastic jack and this is straightforward take each of them in part and they just slide them until they go click so this is the power line for the rear lights it clicked and this is the ground wire I'll struggle a bit but just like that and see it clicked as well cool awesome and now we can proceed with the connection of the uh, power supply filter that I mentioned earlier and with the changes that we've done now all we have to do is just physically connect the two until they click like that so this is the plus and this is the minus i.e the ground just like that and we're gonna isolate the connection it is a fairly strong mechanical connection in its own right but we're also gonna isolate it apply heat shrink to make sure that there is zero chance of this thing ever coming apart And time for some measurements to make sure that everything is all right. First of all, let's measure the voltage on the car jack. So the we're checking the voltage between the reverse uh, light and uh, the ground. And right now it's uh, zero volts because the car is in neutral. Go ahead and hit reverse, please. And we have nearly 12 volts. 
so the car jack works fine but here's something interesting let's take a look at the voltage on the uh, power supply for the camera and with the connection done it has let's say a little less than 12 volts that's fine because that filter probably eats up a bit of voltage like half a volt but that's fine uh, but if you go ahead and hit neutral now you'll notice that the voltage doesn't immediately drop to let's say zero or close to zero instead it drops slowly now this is most likely it's normal and it's most likely because the filter has some capacitor inside that is slowly discharging once the input voltage is removed okay so if we were to wait on this it would slowly 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 go down to close to zero so this is absolutely normal and once you would connect the camera to it because you're going to be adding load the voltage drop is going to be much faster so so far so good our electrical connections seem to be uh, in order and let's put our light connector back this one and start with this uh, plastic cap uh, as always doesn't really work from the first okay it got in continue with the zip tie clip in its original hole over there it clicked awesome and lastly simply con connect the power jack to the light block at the rear and that is it now we need to remove this plastic bit so we can gain access to the place where the camera will be installed and in order to do that first of all we need to remove this rubber seal we just need to gently pull on it like this to make room and then this plastic bit normally should be removed through pulling like that it's uh, held in place with a couple of clips might take some effort but eventually it will get out and with the plastic cover removed we've now gained access to the wires that go to the rear number plates which is important because the camera actually replaces the passenger side number plate light that is down here and to remove the rear number plane plate light just take a pair of uh, tall uh, pliers long i think they're called long nose pliers or something and just grab it from the side it has a small plastic lip which you need to pull and then the entire block simply comes out and you can then pull it a bit further and you can remove the rear light by just twisting it to one of the sides 90 degrees and then out it comes and here's how i routed the power supply for the camera so the two wires come from the light block and i join them together with this wire bundle the one that gets clipped to this uh, to this other wire and where in I joined them in three places with in three places with um, insulating tape and small zip ties to make sure that they, the two wire pairs don't move relative to the existing wires, something like this. And here they go in through the metal plate of the car because they will actually need they will end up being routed through this. Uh, let's see if I can show you through this plastic bit towards the number plate light and with that done we can insert the toolbox back because we're completely done in this side of the car and 
insert it all the way. And now comes the tricky part, actually routing the power supply and the signal wire through that plastic mesh and out of the rear number plate light. For this I actually used a thicker gauge wire and I'm just gonna piggyback my two wires on top of it and pull them through. And let's see how well this goes. Pull from one side, push on the other, like slowly, gently. And eventually it comes out just like this. And after I've pulled the two wires, the power supply and the signal wire, just connect them with the wires from your camera. Signal to signal, power supply to power supply. And then pull back on the wires inside the car so that the camera wire actually gets pulled through the rear number plate uh, opening and out through here. And you can see the camera at the bottom. I've installed it in its correct position, routed the wires inside. And let's see how it looks like on the screen. It looks absolutely brilliant. And I've also measured the correlation between the colored lines and the rear parking sensors and they actually correlate quite well. So we're very happy with this result. All that remains is to properly route the signal wire throughout the car. And when routing the signal wire all the way to the front of the car, my suggestion would be to route it from behind this metal bit close to where the tailgate latches all the way behind through here. You see I've already uh, fixed it in place here and you'll notice on the left side where you have your first aid kit and so on there are a bunch of wires that are actually already routed through the bottom seals on the left side and go all the way to the front and it's fairly straightforward to just try and follow these and uh, link with them using uh, insulating tape or a method of your choice all the way to the front. And after a bit of effort, I managed to route the signal cable through the left rear left side. You can see it here. It's uh, taped to an existing bundle and it actually snakes around the existing electrical bundle. You can see it down here as well. And here it is, over here exiting on the left side of the rear bench and at the moment coming out right through here. And routing the cable through the lower left side is proving to be a bit tricky. Uh, I ended up having to remove these plastic trims like this bit, which is next to the rear bench. Also the driver's side one that you can see here. And in order to remove this, I had to also unclip the middle one next to the seat belt. They're all held together with, uh, with clips, like the one you see here. So just pull on them and they eventually come out. Don't pull too hard to hopefully not break anything. But yeah, with these temporarily removed, I have much more room. And as you can see, there already exists a wiring loom on this part. So it's fairly straightforward to bring our own wire alongside the existing wiring room, loom all the way to the front. And after some additional work, the wire has been routed alongside the existing wiring loom that you can see here. So it's very tight, very neat. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to route it behind the light block, which you can access by grabbing from here underneath and pulling with a bit of effort. And now you can access 
uh, one of the fuse boxes and we will be routing our video cable through the front of the fuse box underneath the steering wheel and all the way to the head unit. Also at this point, once the cable does go through here, you can reinstall the plastic trim back because we're done with it. And here's the wire routed beneath the fuse box. It's actually coupled with a, an external microphone wire, that's why there's two. And this one actually goes underneath the steering column, right next to the uh, foot vent, foot vents, the plastic ones over there. And now this can actually be closed, we're all done here. Alright, and our video wire finally is at the back of the head unit and so now all, all that's left to do is just to connect it and uh, clean up the wires here yeah, and we are done and we're done i finished routing all the cables did a bit of cleanup at the back i didn't actually push this unit all the way to the back because uh, i still have an issue with the radio signal i have to to check that to see what's going on um, but that's a story for some other time in any case Put in reverse, we see the camera working as expected, so we're very happy with the result. And with that, thanks very much for watching and uh, catch you next time. Bye!